Welcome back to more Blood and Wine, everybody. I am Mental Fox, and I thank you for joining me again. We are here in Beauclair, and at the end of the last episode, we went into the brothel here, and we played a little bit of Gwent, and we got ourselves a Skellige card. And since there is another place that is really close by where we could also play Gwent and get another Skellige card, we're going to go ahead and do that. This place is a butcher's shop. So let's go in here and uh, talk to this butcher. See what's up with this guy. Meat of the freshest sort, hot sausage links, ripe blood pudding. Delicious. So we could either buy something from him or play Gwent. He's probably just selling the Fine. normal stuff. Show me what you got. Yeah, look, we could buy meat from him. Not really interested in buying any meat. So we'll see if he's up for some Gwent. It'd be funny if he said, nah. But they're Nothing always busy, up for Gwent. You up for a round of Gwent? Yeah, sure. If you don't mind cards with blood and guts all over them. So, uh, I'm not going to use a Skellige deck until I get all of the cards. Eh, let's do Skoyatel. I don't know. Let's just pick a deck. Yes, yes, yes. I would rather let the opponent go first. Uh, we have a decoy card. Uh, this is a nice card. It, uh, you could play it and pick a card out of your deck. Out of your graveyard, I mean. Here's a nice muster card. This is just a average card, average card, average card. This is one of my favorite cards. Good card, good card, good card. We'll go with this. So you could probably tell from my voice that I've got a bit of a cold or something. So hopefully you won't find that too annoying or distracting. He's going to start in the middle here. Oh, he's using the Skellige deck. What is the symbol here on this card? Uh, Berserker transforms into a bear when a Mardrum card is on its row. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, let's start by throwing out... Let's see, what's his, his special ability? I always want to know that too. Uh, shuffles all cards from each player's graveyard back into their decks. Whoa. Hmm. Interesting. Not sure how I feel about that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not the button I wanted to press. Um, I don't know. Let's just throw him here in the middle. So he's got a muster card he's going to throw out in the back row. And... What am I going to do here? We'll just stick here in the middle row. Why not? Okay. Oh, that wasn't a muster card. That's the handshake card. Yeah, I said wrong before. Hmm. Well, nothing in the front row from him. Well, let's go ahead and throw something in the front row. Have him muster. Grab some people out of my deck. One point ahead. And he throws another bear card. So he's going to throw a marjoram card out here in a bit, probably. No sense in playing this guy because I have nothing to scorch. No sense in playing this guy because I have nothing to pull out on my deck. I'm not liking the way this is going. Oh great! So he threw out the scorch, but he picked a dumb time to do it. He should have did it. Should have done it before I played this card. Then he would have been able to scorch all of these. If I throw this out now, I'll scorch that card. Uh, but sure, why not? Oh, no, actually, I won't scorch it, uh, because it has to be, uh, ten or more. So, I'm glad I remembered that. Well, I guess I need to start throwing these cards out more. We're both, uh, really going through the cards here in this first round. Okay, he's got a muster card of his own. Okay, that's a pretty powerful muster he's got there. Yeah, I'm... I'm not liking this at all. Hmm... No, sir, I'm not. We're both refusing to give up. Oh, no. Another muster card. And... Holy cow. Whoa. Whoa. I cannot compete with that. Yowza. Okay, then. Uh, I suddenly find myself in a lot of trouble here. Even if I play these cards, I'm not going to get up to 93 points. I could throw this out. 
Hmm, if I threw this out, it would get rid of all three of these cards. <sighs> do I want to do that? Because he's still going to have a lot of points left. That will take off 48 points here. No, 36 points here. Leave him with 17. Um, still a lot of points, though. I'm wondering if I should just give up on this hand, since I have the slight card advantage, and let him win. I don't know what Skellige's ability is, though. If you win a round, I don't... I don't know what his ability is, if he'll get to keep a card or what. I mean, if I throw this out, that just leaves me with these two cards. Decoy is really only good to use... Well, there's a couple reasons to use Decoy. Um... Hmm. Yeah, he's only got three cards left. Don't think he's gonna. Obviously, not gonna be able to muster again in the next hand. Should I just go ahead and give up? Can I? Can I take this card back? Swap a card on the battlefield with and return it to your hand. Can I take this card back? Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. The special card. So I can't take that card back, and I don't feel like any of these cards are really worth decoying, so I'm going for it. That'll get rid of all three of those cards. He's still right there with us, though. Okay, and he passed. So now I can decoy, and I'm going to decoy this card, because I'm quite fond of this card. And, um... I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, ah... Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. Because I forgot that he's ahead of me. I was thinking that we were ahead of him. Okay, that was dumb. Um, but I can throw this card out again. Ah, it'll scorch his card. I have to do it. Sheesh, that was dumb. Oh, well. You win some, you lose some. So we've got two measly cards left. He's got three. We pretty much have to beat him in this hand. Okay. Well, that's not kind of what I wanted to see there. He pulls that card out. Picked a dumb time to do it, though. So this is all I have left. I do have this, which I'm going to go ahead and play. Oh. Oh. Okay, I, boy, I am not with it this morning. Uh, I forgot I was playing Scoia'tael. I'm so used to playing another faction where I assumed that this card would be the one that uh, did the Biting Frost. This just does no good to me at all. Crap. Well. That's the only card I've got. Which card do I draw out? I mean, I could draw one of these out and then double it, right? This card isn't going to do me any good right now because he doesn't have over 10 there. And these cards aren't going to muster anymore. So, pretty much just have to pull one of these out. Yeah, this is really bad. He's got two cards left. Okay. Hopefully he doesn't have a Mardrum card. Doubles him to 12. He's got one card left. And... And... We got him. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, whatever works, man. Whatever works. I'll take it. So we're gonna get a card from him. Get some crowns. And we get the Skellige Storm card. Let's check it out. Go to the uh, Skellige deck. Storm. Uh, did I miss it? Storm. Uh, Skellige Storm. Oh, it's called Skellige Storm. Um, reduces the strength of all range and siege units to one. Whoa. Uh, this ain't no normal storm. This here is the wrath of the gods. Alright. Neat. 
But I'm not going to play Skellige until I get all the cards, and we still have 12 more to get. Alright, so that's how this episode starts. Have you at least her others? Excuse me? <laughs> have you at least diddled her udders? <laughs> oh, jeez. Let us bring up our quest list. Uh, we have these two here that I've been dealing with. And I keep saying that I'm afraid to finish this one. Because then it will cancel out this one, I believe. Although that's probably not true. Um, if we did this one, where would we go? We would have to go to this fast travel point. Maybe travel to the windmill and then go up here and here and here. I kind of want to do a quest that's not just doing undiscovered locations because we've been spending a lot of time on those recently. A nice tells talk to Jacob the woodcutter. I don't remember this. This is where? This is up here. Let's see, what's this one? Uh, a short distance from Castle Ravello, Geralt happened on a notice posted by Jacob a lumberjack. The logger was in search of someone who had no fear of spells and could thus face a witch. This was the very description of the Witcher, no two ways about it. So it was no surprise that our hero took an interest in the notice and decided to visit Jacob. Let's do that one. Let's, let's do that one. So we are going to run to this uh, fast travel point right here at Beauclair Port. And then we'll go pay uh, Jacob the Woodcutter a visit. So, uh, before the last episode, I actually went back to the Rune Rite in uh, Novigrad, and I put um, that Severance Rune on my Silver Sword. Um, what I didn't think of, it might be easier to go from here, what I didn't think of was putting the same Rune on my Steel Swords for, for when I fight humans. So, it's something that I'm going to do... Um, Maybe after this episode, because you don't need to come with me when I do that. Not the most exciting thing in the world to watch me enchant swords and such. So we're going to run on over here through this beautiful field on this beautiful day. Where the deer and the antelope play. Here's a lumberjack. So we found a lumberjack camp here. Where is Jacob? Where are you, Jacob? Woodcutter Jacob. What's up, buddy? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, look at the tree disappear. <laughs> look at that uh, wolf he's got. Stay with me a bit longer, Lady Daphne. Um, okay. Is he talking to the wolf? Heal, Mohold. Down. Who asks? A witcher. Saw your notice. Hold up. A witcher, you say? Like in Lewis Herrera's tales and fables. Luckier than a green, bleeding leprechaun I am. See? Not a soul around believes hmm. this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you... You could lift the curse. So you believe in this tale, huh? Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Once your chops busted, Witcher. <laughs> How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. Yeah, hold your tongue, Geralt. So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand. A broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk, and bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. My jaw dropped in the dirt, but right then I knew every jot of it in the tale of Daphne, Gareth, and the Witch of Lynx Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You porking bet. Second edition. I meant it. In Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. 
So why are you so fond of fairy tales? Let's just nose into his business even further. Got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me bore me? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crowd pie. Uh, but I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, if you know not what to do, think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra, and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise even if I wished to. All right, let's examine the tree. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now. Gods be bum poked you. Huh? Okay. No new text. Examine the bleeding tree. What if we talk to him again? Well, what did you learn? Oh, nothing yet. Examine. Hmm. Actually, does bleed. Looks like human blood too, and the bark resembles hypertrophic scars in places. Medallions humming like crazy. Intense magic at work here. Intense magic at work. Still examining the tree. Oh, something over here. Oh, these are all cut down. Was making good time. Strange though. Willows isolated. No other trees near it. Okay. What else? What else am I to examine? Um. Oh, here's something. Judging by the shape of the stain. Okay, let's talk to him again. Any new text, though? No new text. And? Did you look at the tree close? Mm -hmm. Actually does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks wondrous. Did I not say so? Um, let's see how much you're gonna pay me. My help doesn't come free, you know. You speak to a lowly woodcutter. No stench of coin about me. Hmm. No stench of coin about him. Let's freak him out. I cannot pay that much. I do not have that much. <laughs> Agreed. I will pay as soon as the young mate is free. All right, let's look into it. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome love for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag. Before Sir Gareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. To await the moment when Gareth returns, kerchief in hand. That is the power of love. The power of longing. So you must scale Lynx Craig. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. Quest updated, and we got ourselves a book to read. Ooh, bestiary entry added. Yeah, let's look at that. Let's find... What was it called? Daphne's something or other? Uh, not an Elementa, not a Hybrid, not an Insectoid, not a Necrophage, not an Ogroid, nor a Relic. Daphne's Wraith. 
During his stay in Toussaint, Geralt became involved with a curious case of gynodendromorphy, that is to say, a woman who had been turned into a tree. When one cut into this tree's bark, it bled, and when the wind blew through its leaves, one could hear muffled sobs. Geralt investigated the matter and learned magic, or possibly a curse, was responsible for the transformation, and it surely had something to do with a certain sad episode from the woman's past. The love of Daphne's life, a knight errant, had gone to the Witch of Link's Crag and never returned, leaving her to wait for him forever, filled with sadness and longing. Vulnerable against specter oil, that's it, huh? Um, and then we have a book to check out here. Here's the book. Sir Gareth and Miss Daphne loved each other so much it hurt. To win the approval of his future father-in-law, Geralt, Geralt, <laughs> Gareth had to perform seven challenges. The seventh was the hardest. Gareth had to go to Link's Crag, find the witch who lives there, and convince her to lift the drought that plagued the whole land. Everyone, including Let Daphne, pleaded with Gareth to humble himself before the witch. You see, the witch from Link's Crag was spiteful and headstrong even for a witch, and only an act of true humility could break her icy heart. Gareth, however, had no intention of bending his knee before a witch. Instead, he planned to force her to lift the curse. Nobody knows what happened on Link's Crag, but Gareth never returned to his beloved. Daphne stood on the top of a hill and looked for him day and night. Finally, she turned into a tree, so that she may live to see the return of her knight. Such was the strength of her longing and the power of her love. Anyone who plunged his axe blade into that tree would see blood run from the wound. Folk started to avoid that place, leaving Daphne in peace to wait for Gareth. In time, all had forgotten about her. Well, let's see on the map where we're supposed to go. Link's Crag is up here, so we may as well just go ahead and hop on good old Roach and uh, take a quick ride up there. All right, where are you, Roach? Pretty sure I called Roach. Head to the top of Link's Crag. Good luck. Come here, Roach. What the heck, man? Don't make me call you again. What do you have to say? Why are you here, Witcher? Hmm? Huh? Mount. All right. Go for a little ride, Roach. Come on, Roach. Yeah, come on, Roach. Come on now. Pardon me, coming through. So this is actually a place we visited just a short while ago, and maybe even in the last episode, we were just here. And uh, we went through a cave, but found nothing in the cave, so maybe now we'll find something in the cave that we didn't find before. Oh, pardon me. Not attacking. That is a... Doesn't mean it's not a threat, though. Okay. Uh huh. Slow now. Whoa. Uh, I'm gonna hop off a roach here because I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to go. Well, I'm not really staring. All right, where are we going? We're going right up here. Hmm. Hmm. How am I gonna get up here? Um. Look at the dotted line on my map. It's very helpful. Huh, what's this place? Have we been here? I guess I'm gonna take this path up, this roundabout way to get here. So it's looking like this witch is up top here and not in those caves we saw earlier. A hut. The witch's. The witch's hut. Search the hut using your witcher senses. 
Jacob proved a true expert on tales. The lumberjack readily explained to Geralt that the woman enchanted in the tree was Daphne, transformed out of great longing due to her deep love for the knight Gareth, whose return she awaited. Gareth had gone off to scale Lynx Crag, atop which he was to find the witch who dwelled there. He was to force her to lift the drought that plagued the land. Alas, the knight had not returned, and the tale from which the logger drew his knowledge said nothing about what had befallen the knight. If there was an any answer to the mystery, if could only be found on Lynx Crag. Okay, that was worded weird. So, let's search the hut using our Witcher senses. And we'll do some looting while we're here. Because that's what Geralt does. The guy's got to make a living somehow. Okay. Hut looks inhabited. No sign of the dweller, though. Guess I'll look around. Yeah, let's look around. Help ourselves to some stuff. Get some stuff from that. There's something we could examine there. Uh, could loot that. There's a couple things we could loot on the table. We'll get to those in just a moment. Wow, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Huh. Black magic doll. Bear skin. Alright, let's see what this is. Remarks on the proper administration of yarrow. Notes on the use of yarrow stems. Interesting. Yarrow is, first and foremost, used for medicinal purposes. As mentioned above, when the leaves of this herb are placed against the flesh, they heal all kinds of trauma, wounds, and sores. Brew it, and the resulting tincture treats the common cold, colic, and loss of appetite. Yet, in addition to their healing properties, the branches of the arrow plant can be used for fortune-telling. This method of divination might seem strange upon first glance, but is in truth simple and effective. It truly allows one to focus on the query at hand and gain an answer both accurate and satisfying. Is that so? Some stuff over here. Uh, Liber Ivanus. Liber Ivanus. Of mages banned this tome. I then came to a place known as the Panath Valley in a world known as Shagai. The mind of man cannot comprehend this land where non-geometric space and blasphemous colors fly in the face of everything our eyes are accustomed to. In that instant, in the moment of my arrival, I teetered on the verge of madness. I shouted a noiseless cry and sweat, bloody sweat, when two suns rose above my head. I fell to my knees and prayed to Zothaka, not for salvation, but for a quick death. And then they came. Ooh, I want to hear the rest of that story. That sounds good. Bones ground into dust. Okay. On the transmutation of bodies. The transmutation of bodies is one of the most difficult tasks any mage can undertake. Indeed, only the true masters of the art have ever accomplished it, and even they have only perfected one of its forms. This difficulty arises from a psychophysical I'm sorry, this difficulty arises from psychophysical limitations, since a mage can only safely transform into an animal with which he is perfectly attuned. A famous example is that of Ulf Blackbeard, who dwelled for years in a cave with a bear in order to imbibe the life essence of that animal. Neat. Here. Warm. Smells inconclusive. No idea what ingredients are in there. Okay. And then the bear skin. Let's check it out. Hmm. A wall of spell enhancements or trophies. Well, let's just start at the top. Arrow broken in half. No doubt to bring bad luck to the archer. The branch. Branch of a grapevine. Could be to ensure a good harvest or a bad one. 
a doll. Doll looks like an accessory for casting curses. And finally, the kerchief, just like from the story. Silk kerchief, monogrammed DF. Hmm. Could use it to break the curse if it's Daphne's. None but feral cats stray in here most oft, yet it seems I forgessed from afar at that. What do you seek in my home? Oh. Hello. Hi, pretty kitty. Girl's Already not afraid of a cat. It. You do not aim to lift the curse from the tree, girl, do you? What if I do? Then you had best know you waste your time. The old tales? Did your nan not tell them to you? Even I, the witch of Lynx Crag, would be hard pressed to overcome the power of love and longing. Hmm. What happened to the dude? The lady's knight. You ever make it here? Sagarath. Yes. He came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. <laughs> to be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while. Then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? She could not abide it. Uh, can lift the curse myself. Just lift the curse, please. Lift the curse or else. So, the story made it sound like you're supposed to appeal to her sense of humility. Or maybe you're supposed to have a sense of humility. Something like that. Anyway, the story basically said that Gareth should have bended his knee. But he did not. So, let us try bending our knee. What if I asked you nicely to lift the curse? Please. Gareth met the fate he deserved. And what happened to his wench was not my fault. All right, so you didn't cast the curse. But could you help lift it? I probably could. But why ever would I? Hmm. Why? I'll humble myself. Yes, let us learn from that story that we read. Why else would he have given us the book with that part of the story in it? I'll humble myself. Prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. When I saw you enter my hut, <laughs> I thought, Now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. Stand. None. Not even I can restore to the last the yes she has lost, can erase the suffering she has endured. We cannot bring her back to life, but I shall tell you how you might let her depart in peace. Yet my aid shall have its price. A lock of your hair. <sighs> how can I know you won't use it to cast a spell on me? I require this. I must, for with it I will cast a spell to conceal me from you for all time, and will use it for nothing else. You will nag me never again, and you've nothing to fear, I assure you. I always keep my word. Hmm. Uh, let's see, no chance I'll manage on my own, no chance you'll lift the curse from the tree because I say so, or fine, got a deal. Well, I don't see any reason to change our story now. I'll trust you against my better judgment. Lock of my hair's yours. Splendid. What do I need to do? You must convince the maiden her beloved yearned to return, but perished in the attempt. Take her silk kerchief and a fragment of Gareth's remains. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Fire must consume the kerchief and remains. And remember, 
your heart. Your intentions must be pure. Clear? Yeah. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. And adieu. Once you walk out that door, never shall we meet again. Hmm. Well... I'm not sure if I did the right thing. I'm not sure at all. No new text. Find the entrance to the cave under Lynx Crag. So this is the cave we visited before. Now oh, it's locked. So I'm I'm not I'm not sure uh, obviously what else I could have done there if it's even possible to um, save the fair maiden. I don't know. Uh, so I, I I really don't intend to just play through every possible uh, combination just to see what would happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go on with the story as is. Unlike before, when that woman had turned into a wraith, to, it was obvious to me at the time that we could remove the curse. And that's why, in that case, I did go back and replay it. But here, it's just its not obvious one way or the other. I am a little concerned about, you know, the whole, you'll never see me again. It makes me wonder if... Um, I'm closing myself out of some future quests uh, by doing this, but I'm just going to have to deal with it, basically. Alright, where is the entrance to this cave? Where's that bear? Let's try to avoid it. I'm not afraid of the bear. We can take it on pretty easily. But, uh... Let's just leave it alone. Find Sir Gareth's remains. Okay, let's go find his remains. Now, we came down here before, and there were some, what, giant centipedes, I think, down here? And we destroyed their eggs. Actually, I don't remember what was down here. But, uh, we took care of it before, so we needed to take care of it again. Hopefully. Well, using my Witcher senses, and I'm not seeing anything right off. Here's a chest. Oh, there they are, right there. Wow, how did I miss this chest when I was down here before? Man. Here we go. A knight's plate armor and some bones. Gareth's remains. These, them. They are indeed. The armor came apart. Magic. You just fall from a height. Hmm. All right. Well, there we go. We got a bone. Gotta get back to the tree. Lift the curse. All right. Let's get back to the tree. Return to the bleeding tree. Oh, there's a. Uh, that's a puma or a cougar or something down there. I don't want to fight that. I'll give it a wide berth. It's a nice day for a run through the woods, anyway. I even, where am I going? We are going way over here. We uh, visited this hut earlier, and I thought we looted everything. When we were here before, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's been replenished since I was last here. I don't know. Some peasants over here. You could go your own way. All right. Well, it says herbalist's hut, but there is no herbalist. What's up? What? I didn't loot this chest? Well, I thought I'd been here before, but maybe not. I'm gonna take this stuff right out from under these people's noses. Just go this way? That doesn't seem right. Whoops. Oh, it wants me to take this road. I'm just gonna run this way. Screw your road.
bunch of wolves or something to my right. Some kids running around out here. It's like a cute little settlement here. That, uh, I think we visited this place before, did we? Yeah, that's part of Fox Hollow. So we've been there already. We don't need to go back. Long run. Okay, back to the tree. Talk to Jacob. Any new text? Nope. So, you met the witch. You must have. What did you learn? <laughs> which isn't near as bad as you thought. That witch, she's not near as bad as folks say. Made me bow and scrape, sure. But I know some sorceress is witchier than her. <laughs> Joyous, bleeding news, but what about Daphne? Well, here's the bad news. I can lift the curse, free her, by performing a ritual, making a sacrifice of her kerchief and Gareth's remains. But we gotta start at the right time. When the hour comes, I'll light four fires for the four winds, then begin the ritual. Fires? Then I shall be of use to you after all. Seems you need wood, much of it. Chop as much as you can. I'll see to the rest. How big do the fires have to be? I've chopped and stacked the wood. What now? My turn. Gotta light fires and talk to the woman enchanted in the tree. No idea how this'll turn out. So just in case, stand at a distance. And if you see me draw my sword, run. Okay. Light the southern fire. Well, luckily the game is gonna tell me which one is the southern fire. Still no new text on this. All right, Carol. Ignite. Look your last to the world's four winds. From the south, not a word. Light the eastern fire. From the east, no cry is heard. Okay. Oh, Geralt's on fire now. Don't stand so close to the fire, Geralt. You get burned that way. From the north, silence sighs. Okay. Finally. From the west, peer hollow eyes. Cease your vigil. Dead he lies. Okay, now what? We're gonna have to fight this thing, aren't we? Hear me, you who hide beneath this bark. The day of your freedom has come. Behold a kerchief, proof of your love for another. What was that kerchief made out of? Behold, a bone of he to whom you offered your love. return no he won't is his love for me gone hmm. did he stay true uh pfft. eh sure he remained faithful Gareth remained faithful to the end of his days the time comes that I depart I've waited too long I've suffered too much, and now I wish to go. Farewell, lady. I thank you, stranger. And you, my knight. 
I thank you for speaking to me, for standing vigil at my feet. I did not think it would end this way. I hoped we could revive her, but I guess it was not to be. Well, we did what we could. We did all we could. You did well. Here, your pay. And the book is yours as well. Oh, great. Thanks. A little reading, reading material. Take care of yourself. So long, Witcher. I must think. Put this straight in my head. You might want to put out those fires, too. Yay, completed a night's tales. Right lucky thing you showed up. Yeah. So why did I lie to her? I just couldn't think of any reason to tell her otherwise. She wanted to move on. He wasn't coming back anyway. So let her move on. I just didn't see any sense in giving her the bad news. Well, that will conclude that quest. Uh, what was it called? I already forgot the name of it. Um, holy cow, I don't remember the name of that quest at all. It is not in my head at all. But let me see if I could find it anyway. Just to see if there was any final text there. It wasn't this one. It was a uh, level 40. A Knight's Tales. This is it. New text. Geralt found the Witch of Link's Crag and did precisely what the knight from Her Herrera's tale was said to have done. He bowed before her and asked her for her help. Or asked her for help. Though fussy, the witch seemed appeased and betrayed the manner in which the woman imprisoned in the tree could be freed. The success was bittersweet, however, as neither the witch nor the witcher could restore to the woman the life she had lost. Shortly after being freed, her spirit left this world, though it did so at peace with its fate. Yeah, let her leave in peace. I don't know. Sometimes ignorance, ignorance is bliss, let's face it. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, the next episode, what are we going to do? Well, let me see where we are on the map. Uh, I said that uh, I was going to run and put Severance on my sword. And I may as well go ahead and do that. Although I do wonder what I have on my sword right now. This steel weapon has uh, plus 15 attack power. Um... I don't know. We could go ahead and put uh, Severance on there. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to run down to this uh, fast travel point. I'll travel to Novigrad, take care of that, and then I will come back here. And you'll just have to uh, come back to the next episode to see where I am and what we're going to do. As always, I thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you let me know? You can just leave me a like or a comment. It's very simple, very easy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I sure do hope you join me again in the next episode.